have quite a quite a few uh, services owned by Price Library. And don't you feel that they, in some at some point, they compete with each other? How do you look at it? Well, that's a question that's asked a lot. Obviously, we always want to make sure that we're not going to do something that's destructive. And certainly, some people choose they want one service versus another service. We want to be able to provide to all our consumers the best opportunity for them to achieve what they want. Whether they want to use Kayak or they want to use a go or they want to use Booking, it's not our duty to tell them which one they should use. We want to provide them the options to use whichever ones they want to use when they want to use them. Uh, the fact that you have uh, come here to IDC, does it mean that uh, Bryson Group is uh, interested in the market, uh, the CE market, and maybe interested in acquisitions in this market? Well, the first thing is obviously we're a worldwide company. We have activities. We have an office in Kiev. Um, so it's always good to come here and visit some of our people. But the reason to come to the conference is we have a group called the Priceline Ventures Group. And what we're trying to do there is make minority investments in early stage, young companies that are starting out, not necessarily in travel, but things that we think they're doing something interesting, that by making an investment and helping share what we know how to do well with them and learning about what they're doing that may be applicable to what we do across our platform could become a win-win for both companies. So I'm always out looking for a young company to see, geez, there's something that we can do together that would be better for both of us. So you're doing stage, uh, as a stage? We will, no, we, you know, we will do, we don't like doing seed rounds. And it's an A round may not, maybe or maybe not. Because we want to go with companies that have already established some knowledge base, something that they know well, so that would be helpful to us. Now obviously the reason it's not necessarily a travel business, you don't want to have that competition, that would be a problem. By looking at something that is not travel, but they do something, I'll give you an example. Let's say there was a company here that was doing a great job in big data analytics. Well, we have a lot of data going through our system. It would be very helpful to learn a little bit about what they're doing. At the same time, maybe they're having trouble marketing. Well, we're pretty good at marketing. So that's an example of where we could put something together, and maybe each of us would be better off by an investment. Yeah, and talking about uh, travel, uh, travel market, uh, How is it most important to be present, say, physically on uh, on the market, uh, on the in, in the country where they're trying to do this? And how important is it, for instance, for Booking.com to have an office in Kiev? You know, it's um different companies have different styles in these things. I know there are some companies that are very virtual in the sense that they have very few offices and they do everything from the headquarters. And then a company like ours where we have, I, I don't know how many, but it's well over 100, maybe over 150, maybe 200. I don't really, I haven't counted recently. We have a lot of offices around the world. It really depends on the way you want to do your business. We like being in country. We like understanding what's going on in that country. We think it's helpful for us. But there are other companies that do it the other way and they've been very successful too. When investing in uh, some uh, uh, non-local uh, non uh, markets, uh, local for you, uh, do you turn for uh, local uh, funds for, say, the guidance and uh, to make the investments together? Or are you so you're talking about the Priceline Ventures Group? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, it's always helpful to have experts in the region because and this is something we learned very early in some of our mistakes when we first tried to go international outside the U.S. And certainly one of the ways you can really ruin trying to go outside the U.S. is bring in people from the U.S. who have no knowledge about how the business is done in that country. So particularly when you're going to make an investment, you really do need to have expert counsel in that area. Now, whether that's just local lawyers and uh, local business people or you want to do a co-investment with a local fund, it all depends on what the needs are. But I absolutely agree that you need to have people who understand and know what the situation is in that country.